This is Lou White. Back in the 60s, there was a band called the Buffalo Springfield, and they became Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I think the birds were in there somewhere, too. I always liked the birds. The birds were blessed, and the fish, and the people. Be fruitful and multiply. Now we're wearing masks. In this video, <laughs> I've got this sock. And uh, I, t I have these old hunter socks. Uh, there's the place where your foot goes in. It goes in here. These are real old and they're getting kind of stiff. I did wash them, of course. I only wear them once. But anyway, I took the scissors and I chopped off the, the top part and the bottom part, about just about that much. You know, I just took off that much. Now, it left me with this se section right here where the heel goes. And I saw this video that the pirate sent me. Uh, he, uh, and then I, I the, the girl that was in the video showed how she did it. She went and then cut the side over here, the, the top over the front of the foot. And then she took what was left and she folded it open and made one slice halfway across and folded the other part. And, and it turned out let me, let me just lay it on here for you. This is really quite amazing. And uh, people are wearing masks now. But this is the sock sitting on top of the other sock. See? And there's the heel. And I just took this, this heel part and uh, chopped it off, the top and the and foot part. And then I sliced these little things for the ears. And, and the whole thing is real thick. And uh, this part goes over your ear. See? Anyway, I thought you'd like to try making one out of your old socks. And they do smell funny. They're not like new socks, but that's good too. You don't want to put on new socks. Wash them. You know, you don't know what's going on in those factories. I wanted to just read uh, the, what, what the point of this video is. It's kind of like a some kind of hipster beatnik thing going on there. Before there were hippies, back in the 60s, there, in the f 1950s, there were these beatniks. And they would stand up in places like Chicago or New York and they'd read or recite poetry. And, um, and I thought it was interesting that this video kind of reminded me of that. <laughs> Originally, the Silk Road was a trade route out of India in 200 BC or thereabouts. India swelled to the Middle East. It was actually that big. And uh, they brought these uh, bead praying things and circumambulating around objects and bowing to statues and things, you know, into the Middle East, along with the incense and the silk and you know, the nice little tapestries and magic carpets, you know. Well, they weren't really magic. Anyway, they were, uh, it was the Hindu culture, you know, from Babel. And uh, Babel's going to fall, but as people learn about syncretism. Syncretism is making stuff mean other stuff in other cultures, and you borrow it, and you bring it into your culture, and you just uh, sort of go, Hey, that kind of reminds me of this. Well, anyway, it infected the whole world after it hit Alexandria, Egypt, and went to Rome, and then it became everywhere. Domed capital buildings, you know. Anyway, uh, the Hindu culture saturated the world by launching from Alexandria in Rome, praying to the dead, necromancy, holy water, from the Ganges River, or that kind of idea. Cossacks, you know, kind of like 
guru garments, guru garb, uh, hand gestures. Uh, there's all kinds of those. Those are called mudras. Namaste. You know, the spirit in me bows to the spirit in you. That's where your palms get together like this. Of course, they're not praying to the creator. They're praying to um, the ancestors or something. I, anyway, um, crickets, raccoons, taking care of those people. Reincarnation, which actually comes from Nimrod. Nimrod was slain. Then his wife was found to be with child. And she said, oh, Nimrod's going to get reborn. That's who this is in my belly. And of course, he was worshipped as, as the son. And simultaneously was her husband and her child. There's your trinity. Anyway... Domes, which are Shiva lingams, steeples, crucuses, stupas, ashes on foreheads. Crucuses and uh, ashes on foreheads, where have we ever seen those? Oh yeah, I remember now, I was raised in that stuff. Well, bowing to images, uh-oh, I wonder where we've seen that. Uh-oh, yeah, kissing toes of statues. Uh, bowing to him, burning incense to the statue. We've seen the, these things in movies, and now it's all getting together, and people are waking up and going, uh-oh. How about prayer rugs and yoga? Yoking with spirits on a sacred space called a carpet. That's a magic carpet ride. Connecting with demons. Yoki with demons. That's what yoga means, yoke. And so much more abominable behavior is not going to survive the second coming of Yahusha. When he comes back, there's not going to be any stupas. There's not going to be any cubes walking around stupas, um, bowing to images, things like that. It's going to be crispy critters, powder, dust, ashes. That's all that's going to be left because we've broken the everlasting covenant. Read. Yashiyahu, or Isaiah, chapter 24. That's why he's going to burn the earth. He explains it. Hope you enjoy the bloopers. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. strikes deep into your mind it will creep it strikes when you're always afraid step out of line the man comes and takes you away syncretism strikes deep into your mind it will creep strikes when you're always afraid. Step out of line, the man comes and takes you away.